one. Cameras go live. We'll pause for a minute. Thanks for joining us everyone. We're just waiting for the rooms to fill. Mm -hmm. Hi friends, families, communities from Canada and all over the world. This is Operation Hog a Trucker and we're here with Taking Back Our Freedoms, our veterans and our operational control for the convoy. So. Just to let you guys know what we have for you today, it's our job to try to counteract the narrative of the mainstream media, which we know is non-factual. Um, we do have some truth that will come to light today. We also have some information on how you can support us and support our initiatives to stand against the emergency mandates. And I'm gonna pass this over to Roy because he's got far more important things to say. I think, Dana, you're always more important, at least more fun things to say, that's for sure. Um, I'm the executive director with Taking Back Our Freedoms, and of course, um, one of the things, uh, the mandate we have is to put maximum pressure on our politicians to end the mandates and the emergencies. And uh, Our focus initially was on MLAs because most mandates are provincial. Uh, we never imagined such a crazy move on the part of the Prime Minister to actually require truckers to take vaccines at the time when Omicron is the most minor of the virus, is exactly the precise of the time when uh, there was no need for further vaccines. So uh, the Prime Minister initiated everything you see happening here in Ottawa. If you're upset about what's happening in Ottawa, you need to give the Prime Minister a call. That's the person that's responsible. But of course, his move, uh, again, you know, he decided that first of all, he's going to insult all of those who are disagreeing with him. His version of an emergency is uh, when he dislikes people, disagrees with them, he cons considers those people enemies of the state. That's the thinking of a tyrant. That's not a democracy. Uh, in a working democracy, you always welcome differences of opinion on even important matters, like whether you should mandate a vaccine or not. People have a right to that difference of opinion. The real emergency is we have a prime minister who thinks and like, is operating like a tyrant, and that's the real emergency we have. But nevertheless, the legislation introduced by the Prime Minister is a very serious threat to our democracy. And so yesterday we uh, urged people to get started in a campaign to put maximum pressure on our members of Parliament. That's the first line of defense, uh, because uh, they're in session right now. They could, in theory, have a vote tomorrow. And if the Prime Minister has the votes, he might do that. And. Uh, and so we urge every Canadian to get on the phone and go to our website, tb tbof.ca. You'll have information there that will give you everything you need to know what to do. Bottom line is we need to phone our members of parliament and urge them to uh, not support the mandate, or pardon me, the uh, Emergency Measures Act, uh, and to uh, oppose the extension. He has up to seven parliamentary days to do that. But again, it says up to seven parliamentary days. A lot of people think, oh, it'll be seven days from now. No, it could be tomorrow. So that's the first step we've taken. Um, and in addition now, we're now urging a second step, and that is that everyone also call your senators, because that's where, uh, a, a, again, a vote has to also take place with the Senate. They're not currently in session. So in theory, the earliest that could happen is next Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but uh, we want to encourage people, if you've called your member of, of parliament, to now also call your, uh, your senators in your province. So, for example, in Alberta, we have three senators from the province of Alberta. Every Albertan should be calling those three. Calling uh, both their office here in Ottawa, as well as, as well as their home office, and as well as emailing them. And uh, we need to have overwhelming voices speaking to our senators, uh, rational voices, sensible voices, uh, but overwhelming voices speaking to our parliamentarians, both the members of parliament and the Senate. And so uh, then the third thing that we're going to urge everyone to do, if you're part of an organization, as we have an organization called Taking Back Our Freedoms, there are dozens of organizations, maybe even hundreds of organizations in Canada that vigorously oppose what the Prime Minister is doing. Even the Civil Liberties Union, a left-leaning organization, is opposing uh, these measures. 
and all of these organizations need to write briefs to all parliamentarians and to the senators so that we hear from organizations. And I have as an example a brief, we're not going to read it here, but I passed it out to the uh, media people that are here in the room. Um, we're going to be posting that on our website as an example of a letter written by our lawyer, Jeff Rath from Calgary. And uh, I spell his name W-R-A-T-H, but actually the real name is R-A-T-H. He can sometimes be very strong in his opinions and expression of opinions, but he's also very right. And, uh, and so we have a powerful letter that we're going to be sending in to all parliamentarians on behalf of our organization. And whatever organization you're part of, the veterans groups, the police groups, the freedom groups of every kind, it's very important for the next few days to get a letter together and send it to every single parliamentarian, every single senator. Uh, they all need to hear from all of us and uh, with a resounding voice. This is by far the greatest threat against our freedoms in the history of this country. Now, I'm of German background. I know that there was a time when you needed to fight a war twice, actually, against the Germans, but they were on the other side of the ocean at that time. They were a very real threat. The threat we face is a loss of democracy and freedom coming from within. And every person that is concerned about that needs to do everything you can. Others in the past actually literally risked their lives going to war. We, all we have to do is risk your reputation, possibly your bank account, figure that one out. But do the right thing. We're fighting for freedom. You need courage at this time. You need to know that this is the right thing to do in the right side of history. Uh, don't allow intimidation to uh, cause your voice to be silent. Uh, and so I want to encourage people in those three steps, call your member of parliament, call your senator, uh, senators, you have lots in Ontario and Quebec, by the way, so you have more work there than in Alberta, but uh, call them and email them. And then if you're part of a group, let's get these letters together and let's make a, a powerful message uh, very, very powerfully delivered to our parliamentarians so they have no, no doubt about where Canadians stand on this issue. So thank you very much. Again, uh, there should be a copy for everyone. The Death of Democracy in Canada, written by Jeff Rath. Uh, again, legal counsel. This man has, in the past year, donated over a million dollars pro bono to the cause of freedom. This guy's a true hero, a true man of conviction, and so I'm proud to have him as a board of directors, along with uh, Mr. Peckford as our chairman of the board, Premier Peckford. We have an amazing group of people, but the most amazing people are the citizens of Canada that need to now be mobilized as a voice for freedom. Thank you very much. Oh, just one more thing. Every single day in this room from now on, we're going to have at 1.30, so you all know, right, uh, a, a daily press briefer. And so this room is available for, of course, other groups that want to use it, but we're going to do this daily press briefer every day at 1.30 here in this room. So there's a, a briefer tomorrow at 1.30, and uh, so we'll have some really interesting announcements then as well. Oh, I should have introduced Jeff. Jeff, one of the heroes in the uh, team convoy room. Uh, this guy, yeah, you take a lot of flack and are doing an amazing job. So you just go ahead and share with us. Sorry. Thanks, Roy. My name's Jeff. Um, it's really an honor to be here with so many dedicated people doing so many good things for the citizens of this country, which is in turn motivating the entire world to speak up and stand up for what is truly good. I've come here and, and kind of fallen into a role to be an operations coordinator and really what that is, it's a fancy title for somebody that likes taking care of people. So the job or the task that I've been given is to surround myself with incredibly kind and intelligent, dedicated individuals that all work together to make sure that the people who are here in the streets, in their vehicles, in their trucks, stay fed, they stay warm, they stay happy and they stay safe. And that is really what's happening outside today. The news, the legacy media, as I'll call them, and we're starting to find out that they're nothing but a bedtime story because there's not a lot of reality going on out there today. They throw a lot of noise, they get a lot of people back home nervous, they get a lot of people here nervous, but as long as we stand together and we stay united, and we stay peaceful and hopeful, we can move mountains. 
One person with one pickaxe isn't going to do much. But thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people pick up that pickaxe and they all work on the exact same mountain. We're going to move that mountain. It's just going to take time. But I just want to make it clear. I'm part of the team that's boots on the ground every day. I couldn't do it without the support of the members that we have behind us, the veterans, the public support, and the organizers. It's, a, it, it's an effort that has to be combined all together. It is unity is the message. And together we will arise. But together we're making sure that everything stays positive. There is no need for any word of emergency here. I mean, if I can find something that's an emergency, all of the garbage that we've collected and centralized is starting to pile up and I guess we need to get a little bit more city help to get that stuff out of here. I don't know if it's an emergency when food shelters are full of food and they don't know what to do with all of the excess donations, but it's an emergency for us because we don't want food to spoil, so we've increased our reach and we're going outside of the city of Ottawa to other communities. I'm not sure if it's an emergency when people share strong feelings, good conversations, hugs and love. I would say that's an uplifting, great experience. So the emergency here is false. It's been created by people who want to oppress a message of pure goodness. And let's not stop perpetuating that message. Let's not stop that motion. And you've heard, there's a lot of people that have engaged probably every single person that's here. If you've got friends and family that's, that have been here, we can all say people back home, how can I help? What can I do? You have now heard how you can help. Not just being here, but supporting what is going on globally. Knocking on the doors, ringing the bells, making the phone calls, sending the letters, sending the emails to those members of parliament to let them know that we are truly concerned with what is happening in that house. And it is not right. We can all take action and we can all stay engaged and we can all get back to where we need to be, where we want to be and where we never should have left. And that's free, enjoying everything around us by our own choice and being accepted collectively and respected for the choices that we have. This for me has been nothing but healing and every person you talk to that felt pushed away, put in a corner and ignored, all found a dark place in their own way. And I've seen it with the conversations that I've had. This is healing. This is a strong message worldwide to anybody that still feels alone. You're not alone. You're absolutely not alone. And we will continue staying here unified, holding the line, peacefully, patiently waiting as citizens of this country to be acknowledged. There is no emergency, but there is a whole lot of love. I'll pass it back to Dana and thank you. Well done. Well done. So, in search of the truth, every day we hear things on mainstream media. Every day, our freedom-loving group. This is this is a war for freedom, right? It's a it's a social media slash mainstream media war. We come across things, we wake up in the morning and we're like, shit, that didn't happen, excuse my language. But I'm being honest here, I'm a real person, so I'm not going to pretend I'm somebody I'm not. So I met these wonderful veterans, these gentlemen here, every day escort us to make sure that we are safe in our deliveries to our trucks. And you got to ask yourself, who are we trying to be safe from? We're trying to be safe from the very people that our government appointed to protect us, which is the police of Ottawa, you know? If I'm an adult and I'm afraid, can you imagine what the children of Ottawa feel like when they see all these stormtroopers and stuff come by? It's very intimidating, right? So we have a story for you. We have right from the horse's mouth, the gentleman that removed the fence at the war memorial did it because it was their war memorial. They fought for those rights. They fought for the freedoms that we stand for today. And they do not deserve to be disrespected by mainstream media. So I am going to give them the opportunity that they deserve to stand up on the front lines with us again against mainstream media and tell you what really happened on that day. Jake, it's all yours. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so every day at 1 p.m. veterans, 
meet up the two of the unknown soldier. Uh, there was an incident the first Saturday, and five days later, they put the fence up on a Friday, you know, right before the crowd show up, like, because they like their optics. So for eight days, we were cleaning the snow off, salting it. I personally had 60 Ottawa residents tell me they've never seen the monument that clean or well looked after. My question would be to the government is where is the honor guard and why isn't that spotless every day? So the last Saturday we all got together as a group of veterans and decided to take the fence down because there should not be a prison around our greatest monument of, for freedom. And we mount a 24-7 guard on it at all times. I'm going to tell you the real truth about what it's like on Ground Zero. There's, you know, we have nothing to be afraid of because we're here for the right reasons and on the right side of history. But that doesn't stop the intimidation, it doesn't stop the lies, and it doesn't stop the vicious circle that we've been in that rolls on a weekly basis, okay? So let me explain to you how it, how it works, how it works to be here on the streets. Friday is a good day for us. Why? Because we have a huge influx of native Ontarians that migrate to Ottawa. We know that the government's not going to flex and send their turkeys out with their chests puffed out to intimidate us on the street or to scare our truckers to go home. So we catch a little break between Friday and Sunday. You know, once Tuesday rolls around and the streets get quiet and, you know, we've got 9 and 10 and 12 and 14 and 15 people setting pylons up and, you know, just flexing. I've never seen so much flexing in my life. It's actually ridiculous. They should all go to Gold's Gym and get memberships. If that would get them out of the streets of Ottawa, I'd be happy. But anyway, um, I'd like to call on as many people as we can to join us in Ottawa. Bring your children, bring your families. I mean, we've got more protection than anybody. You know, we're all a bunch of freedom lovers here to take care of each other, but we need that presence. We need those eyes to help share the truth to the world. We need the support of the men and women that are in those trucks that are fighting for our freedoms. Now, I'm always about planning fun things. Um, I do have something that I'm gonna ask the veterans today if they will give me a help with tomorrow evening. I have put a call out and our group has put a call out for people that I would like to say are casualties of COVID-19 and the war against freedom, right? And the battle that we have to try to reinstall that freedom. And there is voices, much like the veterans and much like everybody else, that has not been represented in our country and all the countries around the world. And those are the victims of the vaccines. Those are the victims of the mental health situations that we have, the increased suicide, the increased addictions, the spousal abuse, the children that are trapped in homes with abusers. We have over 800 people on a very short reach that we've reached out to with stories that will break your heart. Those people have reached out to every mainstream media platform around this country, and I know because I've sent them myself, and they get denied. Why? Because somebody says, I'm just doing my job. If you have to say, I'm just doing my job, you already admit that you know that your moral compass and value is being flexed by money, power, greed, and control. And none of us are about that. So I'm gonna ask, with your permission, veterans that stand behind me, if you would join me tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for us to place the new soldiers of the modern freedom wars, pictures and stories at the war memorial for a candlelight vigil. Is that, a, it, would that be sanctioned by you guys? Awesome. If the community would like to join us, we will be at the 12 soldiers tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, feel free to light a candle and put it in your window. Anywhere around the world, you can send us a picture on Hug a Trucker because it all matters. These guys and girls are sat in their trucks scrolling every day looking for positive things and reason to be motivated, you know. So when the turkeys go by with their chests all flexed, they can see little kids with, you know, we're looking for hugs. So that's all I have to say. I don't know if anybody else would like to speak. Yeah, just maybe one thing I think should be mentioned that the, uh, the Legal Council for Freedom uh, Convoy Together, that his name is Keith Wilson together with Chris today did a great little talk about the truth about this uh, legislation the Prime Minister has introduced there is no reason to fear coming to Ottawa 
uh, where this is a peaceful assembly. I took that word right out of the Constitution. It's an assembly of people who disagree with the government narrative and are doing so with peacefulness, with love, and there's no reason to not come to Ottawa. The weather's going to be much warmer this week than last week, and so we're urging people to come in large numbers and come to celebrate and come to stand for freedom. So that's straight from even legal counsel. Get here uh, that there's nothing to restrict you from gathering in peaceful assembly. Thanks very much. Final words? No. Questions? <clears throat> yes. Um, some people are asking about some rumors about CPS coming and uh, visiting the truckers or concerns with children. Is there any um, way that you guys are going to mitigate that? Well, we've what, talked about. What does CPS stand for? Child Protective Services. So we talk about flexing. So every day is Groundhog Day. Every day we wake up to false flags where we're either getting smoke, smoke grenaded or somebody's going to come and take children out of cars or somebody's going to get towed or somebody's getting a $500,000 fine. This is the story of our life. So whether or not I can confirm that Child Protective Services is coming, um, they really have no reason to come. Like in Newfoundland, we take people on a tent ice fishing, you know, that wouldn't be like really, really warm temperatures, but for some that would be not normal. You know, these families are truckers. Their houses are trucks. They're staying in hotels. Everybody's safe, loved, fed, watered. That's our job as parents. We're not supposed to filter them from life. And nor is it a bad thing for us to have them at a peaceful freedom rally. You know, they're no threat at all. We distributed 150 loot bags and half of them already were like, well, we already got too much stuff so you can give it to somebody else, you know? So in regards to Child Protective Services, I will let everybody know that has it happened? No. Is it going to happen? Well, that depends on the kindness and compassion of our, our government and the kindness and compassion of our police force to <coughs> follow through on the crimes of our government. Um, are we prepared if something like that happens? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have hotels, we have families, we have nannies, we have all kinds of early child care development people that have stepped up and said if they need to help encourage education, if that's an issue for Child Protective Services, we are prepared to do that also. Um, you know, the biggest breakdown we've had has been a breakdown in communication. You know, when we're knocking on the door of the federal government and they don't say hello, and then they go off and tell a whole bunch of stories when nobody's been here, that's kind of rude, right? When we have you know, these false things are being put out every day to intimidate us. Well, we're starting to figure out it's all intimidation, right? Why? Because we've already done this for two years. Get your vaccine, you're gonna die, right? I've had COVID before, I'm here, right? I have 84 year old clients that's had COVID, they're still here, right? It's not a one size fits all, but the fear has been placed in our minds. That's why when you take somebody's mask off, they're terrified. You know, I took it, and then probably this is not the right place to tell this story, but I will tell this story. So I have a very personal business where people come in and, you know, I have a lot of older clients. And I had this older client call and she said, I'm going to come in and see you, but I need to be by myself. There can't be anybody else there. You have to sanitize hands. You know, I'm going to have my mask on and can you make sure everything has been cleaned? I went through that process and I said, you realize I've had COVID, right? So I have natural immunity. Everybody look up what hap what's happening with natural immunity and COVID-19. If you've had natural immunity, you're good to go, yeah. right? You're good to go. You can pretty yeah. much go lick coffee cups at Tim Hortons and not make anybody sick, yeah. right? So, but the fear's out there because the government doesn't tell you that. So after I was done her service, I pulled her mask down and she cried because it was the first time that she had been out in public in two years it's the first time that she's taken her mask off in two years. I think we're all aware of the level of fear that we have to deal with, but what I've seen on the streets is completely faith driven. Everybody is here to be on the right side of history. We found our power, we found our unity, we found our colored brothers and sisters and religions of different colors and cultures and statuses, and we put that all aside. So it's time, because everybody knows we're not going back in a box. Right? We're not going back in a box anymore. We're done with the box. So faith over fear. Take off your face nappies. If you want to keep your face nappy, that's cool. But don't go yelling at people because they have theirs off. Questions? Yeah, could we hear from the veterans as to how, why you all are here and what the general consensus is among 
among all you veterans? Go ahead. Okay. Okay. What your thoughts on the movement is? Yeah, I've, I've been watching the uh, the movement evolve over the past couple of weeks. I was here right from the beginning. I knew it was someplace that I needed to be. I wasn't sure why I should come other than I see a bunch of people coming from across the country to stand up for freedom. And that's what we do. We stand up for freedom. And these people need our support. And we all know that freedom is our basic essential in this country. Everything we do is based on that. Make your own choices. Do what you like. As long as you don't harm anybody else and break our existing laws. These laws are not laws. These are tyrannical laws. These are laws that governments produce to keep people from exercising their freedom, and we can all see that. So that's why I came, and that's why I'm staying, and that's why I'm lending support to the truckers who are here standing up for every Canadian right across this country, and I'm proud to stand with them, and I'm sure the rest of the guys here are as well. Thank you. I would love to hear you tell us about the threat message from the police that have been like given to every single person today, uh, saying that we can get arrested if uh, they still remain on place. What is your tell about that and what you would do with this threat? Okay, so the question is, is about the papers that were distributed today to tell everybody to go home or get fines. Um, my advice is don't go anywhere. I mean, if we're going to be afraid of a ticket, what are we doing here, right? We're, we're here for Freedom and Center for the Lives of Our Families. Um, we do have people that are supporting us um, in regards to like helping take care of these fines. We do have a full legal team that is available to anybody that gets a ticket. So we've got supports in place for that. Um, once again, it's to create fear and to get people moving, right? Like some bank accounts have been frozen, things like that are happening. Um, that's to sweat us out, starve us out, scare us out. And everybody that's here is not going anywhere. So my advice is get your ticket, make a happy face on it, write your name and phone number on it, call the 1-800 number that we have for the, for the lawyers, and just send it off and try not to worry about it. Yeah, and again, the, the Keith Wilson, uh, video, I think it's on TikTok, he addresses it directly. He said, this is not true. What was distributed by the police is misinformation, and he explains the truth that uh, peaceful assembly in this city is permitted. There's been a legal opinion that it's permitted except for the horns, right? The only thing that was not permitted was the horns. Everything else is fine. So that's very clear. And again, that's not my opinion. It's Keith Wilson. And I don't know if you needed to add anything to that, Tom, but uh, are, are we good? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, just for Jeff, can you uh, address anything you guys need operationally um, that's most critical? <clears throat> I would think the most critical thing we need is just people to come here and be present. We have an abundance of food. We are making smart decisions and safe decisions to keep everybody fueled up, regardless of the powers that be that are trying to stop us but it's the support that's the biggest thing we need is the support and I mean just just real quick wrapping it up if you're local and you can come here and be present that's great there's nothing to be fearful of there's lots of hugs to be had it's great but uh, it's, it's the support and if you and if you can't make it here it, it's sending those emails making those calls as was discussed previously to make it known that we're not comfortable with this, we don't support it, and we're not gonna put up with it anymore. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Travis Cross with Not TV. This is for any of the vets. Um, if you're involved in a combat situation where there's fear and psychological uh, misinformation and challenges, how do you find hope? How do you, how do you continue the next day? Do you answer that question? Do you answer the question? No, I just wanna find some hope I've been for the combat, audience. So I can't touch on that one. Or is it anything that applies today? If there's a lot of fear in people's hearts, how do you just find the courage to keep going each day and keep finding hope and sharing that with each other to sift through misinformation or? Well, to put it uh, easily, it's just love like this to see this many people here um, for one cause and it's choice, right? It's to have the, uh, the choice at the end of the day whether you want to wear a mask or whether you want to uh, take a vaccine. Um, it's, the, it's the hope 
that your brother or sister beside you is going to uh, either at least respect you in your truth, uh, if not stand beside you. Thank you. Yep. Any more questions? Just a last question. Um, I was just thinking about the people who can actually see their life and fall, their company completely uh, blocked and their bank account froze. Some of them have mortgage, families to take care of. Do you have any support, financial support that you can provide to them or other support to keep them staying here? Well, the, this freedom protest that's happening in Canada is setting the stage for the world. So we have unlimited resources. And when I mean unlimited, like everybody supports us. We can go out in a day and we can supply many trucks with what they need. Um, the problem is, is getting the government to stop blocking the funds that were legitimately collected by the community to support these people. Um, but in the meantime, we're good. We're fine. Uh, we have a triage fund. We go out every day. We check on everybody to make sure they have what they need and um, everybody's working together. I mean, it's grassroots, right? We're all very creative people, so if we don't have the resources at hand, we find the resources and, and people are just coming together. So, you know, my, my advice is, is just for those that need something, is to make us aware because we will pull together the community to make sure that they can stay and stand for their freedoms. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah. Hey, uh, sorry to keep you folks. Um, I just wanted to jump in. I was thinking about that last question over there. I want to speak up because I'm a non-combat vet. Um, and uh, I would say that just in my own experience, uh, the best therapy is just working hard to solve your own problems. So uh, that's why I'm here. Um, and I just want to say something like for myself. I'm not really saying this on anybody else's behalf. Um, but uh, I don't hear anybody else saying this. And Harvard predicted this crisis in 1991. It's called... Uh, Strauss Howe generation theory says that this kind of uh, oppression goes in four generational cycles. So the last one would have been the Great Wars, and before that it was the American Civil War, and before that it was the American Revolution. Um, and they predicted that this was going to happen, whatever crisis happened to float uh, into the regime's lap. Um, at this particular time, they would uh, ex exploit and prolong um, and just kind of exploit the rest of us. Uh, and it's because there are only four generation four generational archetypes uh, are prophet, nomad, hero, and artist. And the prophet is the one that's born uh, in the immediate aftermath of the previous crisis, so they don't go to war. And uh, they, uh, they, they kind of like a lot of stuff just kind of happens for them, you know, because they're rebuilding the civilization. It's a time of rebirth and regeneration. And uh, when they reach peak institutional power, as every generation does in their early elderhood, just prior to retirement, they tyrannize us. Um, and that's the boomer generation. They're the, uh, the same uh, generational archetype as uh, Stalin, and that's kind of what I see happening right now, and you can call me a crackpot or come whatever may, but uh, this, this is the best I got. I'm, uh, I was a really good radar technician back in the day, and when I see the same problem in every single subsystem, as in every single institution, from the university to the military to the press, uh, across the West and across the world, well, I look for the common point, and that's what I see is uh, it's generational. So, but that's just me talking. I'm Jeff Eafley, by the way. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Oh, and before I get accused of polarizing our society even further than it already is, um, compassionate revolution is obviously the, uh, the the way forward here, guys. It's uh, these are our elders that we're talking about, and yeah. uh, we just got to ask them to retire. Okay, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Tomorrow night we will be at the uh, 12 Soldiers at 7 p.m. Thank you for attending our briefing. It's your message that resonates around the world. If you're in any country, do your part. Stand up. You know, this whole ostrich mentality, we're going to put your head in the sand and, and be a hero. That doesn't work. It's time for everybody to stand up. They asked you to stand up to take a vaccine, and it got 95% of Canadians' population to stand up. So now we're asking you to stand up for choice and for freedom and for the future of your children. If you want to be a hero, this is how it's done. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to our veterans. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Laura Lynn TV. All right, so we'll be quiet till the live's done.